A little update on the CNC machine. Uh, CNCs are noisy and dusty. And with that, there's all kinds of adjustments that go along with it. I've had this CNC machine for about a year now, and I'm enjoying it. A few things that I've done uh, to it is uh, 3D printed this uh, dust collection pipe on it. I put some little reinforcements on the corner. This is a shop fox table with locking wheels. Everything in my shop is on wheels. Um, I basically pull everything out, pull it out to the middle and work on it, and then uh, roll it back in. So everything is pretty much uh, movable. On this little table here, it's a shop fox is pretty pretty uh, stout. Um, I've modified it a little bit. I put a router uh, speed controller on here so when I'm cutting some acrylics, grease gun for like when I'm uh, servicing the, the uh, bearings in the CNC, and then just various plywood things, a little cam action stuff, so little cam action things, your lubricant, um, just different things that, that I'll use on the CNC machine. Center finder, uh, this is a small brad nailer that shoots a 18 gauge nail there, a soft nail, and I use those. This is a screwdriver that I use to pop the plywood parts out. I learned that a big crescent wrench is better on my quarter cable. It fits right up against the bottom of the router, so I don't have to wonder where the nut's at when I'm putting spindles in. And then I added, I do a lot of with drills and uh, uh, screw bits, so I added these in here for that, and they make that pretty good. You do want to sand those so they're not sharp, so they don't cut you. And this has the laser module on it as well, and some of the boxes that uh, that I cut for in there. That's just my laser module that plugs in, and that's part of the, one of the things that will still fit across the very front of the machine. The rest of it is kind of coming in across the top there. I just have a power strip and some of the bits. This is a handy little device. You can get these uh, Christmas time. They're just a electric module that controls the power off and on on your machines. I can turn on the big dust collector in the shop vac and then the, the heater if I want to. And then I put a, I cut the cord in half and just use some masking tape so that when, you, that when this is around my neck that you can easily pop this apart. So if it was to get caught up, I did machine a little piece of plastic on here to keep this from being pushed. But you know, to turn on your, your collectors, it's always around your neck, you're not having to find, fight it. And then, uh, you know, it, it does, there's the shop back back over in there and uh, that kind of thing. So those are uh, a good thing to have. Also, when you have your router and you're using USB, get you one of these cords so that you're not wearing out your controller port. You wear this little cheap $4 cord out and not the port on this. Same goes for power if you're unplugging it all the time get you an extension adapter and uh, plug that in so there's my USB did 3d print some of these little part bits um, the collets uh, you can buy them for like five dollars good investments because the bits are hot and they're sharp and you know if you're in there changing them all the time they do get hot so I've got four or five extra collets around here and that's all working real well touch plates of course are always a wonderful thing we're gonna go ahead and lift this up this thing probably weighs right in it maybe not very much pound pound and a half uh, of, of effort and I put the corners on here one on the other side where these go in they're just screwed to that it's a real quick toggle uh, my machine is almost between the bed height that's between my belly button and and uh, my upper chest in, in height wise so not much stooping or bending over uh, this is a shark HD 510 and when I'm putting the laser module on, I put this on there because it plugs in the front and it, it goes across here. And what this does is it keeps the cords from getting hang up, hung up. I did put a little uh, LED light on there that just basically sharpens, uh, shows what's being done with the wood um, and works out good. I do maintenance on this about every 30 hours. I'll shoot some grease in it and uh, lube it up. And they say, you know, that's all we need to do is keep it clean. The vacuuming on, on this is pretty easy. 
uh, when I'm done CNCing, this tray will be full of sawdust all the way down to the end. There'll be none on the floor. Be a little bit in the very back corner, but on the two sides. I have that. This is uh, the shop fox table. I just basically bought the, the maple uh, top with it from uh, Grizzly. And then uh, I added a piece of MDF on top, and then I trimmed it with some cherry. And it makes a very solid work surface. Uh, just very solid. Also added two layers of MDF. The first layer I put on there with the nylon nuts that go in the in the T-tracks and holds it down. And then I found out that my bits were bottoming me out and uh, my Z-axis wasn't going all the way down. So I had an extra set of MDF up here on top. And I've machined this uh, two or three times uh, to get it down to a lower level and get it flat. And then I use quarter inch plywood uh, as my, my, as my replaceable board. So once I get it machined, I rarely go down into that other part and I just tag it down with nails and and then this is a template I've been making some plaques so these little guys here I got them off the the web and you know just made a, a V carved template to cut them out from scraps and I've got a pile of 15 or 20 of them in there and then I leave them on my jig so and then you know I just screw the thing down into the MDF table you can't hardly beat a, a jig that you can just put a screw down the tabletop I've been doing woodworking for a long time you know 35 40 years and you just can't beat a wooden table um, for being configurable you can just screw down whatever it is um, I don't use the tape and I don't use the the double-sided tape or the CA glue I've got it available I just never have used it I would just always jig them up every time that I have an issue it's when something comes loose so I don't like for them to come loose I'll do that I've used a lot of the box joint gadgets uh, create boxes um, a lot of them are oh like for example this is a dowling jig box and I've created that box this is this is a vacuum silencer for the shop vac and I have a dust deputy over there and then the hose will reel out all the way to the middle of the shop but the uh, that works out real well this is a baffle the top part here's a baffle that, that uh, reduces the sound that was well worth the its weight and the box here is is well worth it as well um, it just doesn't you know it keeps the dust down it, it keeps some of the noise down as well if i really wanted to go soundproof i just build another box put a put a piece of uh, plywood on it and then build another box over it um this uh box doesn't have anything inside it i see these guys putting all this stuff inside there and i'm thinking what you know it's always going to be raining down sawdust on them because it does collect on the side walls. It does collect on any little nook and cranny. And uh, it's a mess. So if you're filling your CNC closure with foam, it's gonna be one big mess every time you open it up. It's just gonna be raining down mess. So uh, if you keep it kind of clean and vacuum it out every now and then, it'll keep you from getting all dusty and, and uh, dirty. And the way this unit works is, is again, you know, it just basically like a big ice chest that sits over the top of the box and you know you just put it down in there and, and another little shop update is I added the fan with the furnace filter on it it's getting pretty dirty up there I need to take it out and clean it uh, that just filter slides out from this end over here and you pull the strap the fan also slides out but that's stuff that I made with a box joint I probably made 50 boxes with the box joint of all kinds of different sizes um, I made this box joint jig right here uh, before I had the CNC and then so that's I've just had some lot of fun with it and but the shops updates are getting pretty good I've been in the middle of uh, working on some um, stuff at the campground so I'm transitioning between this and that and worked on the RV a little bit these are some uh, little clamps that fit on the tables and they're pretty handy as a stopper or you know just a, a simple clamp and they lock down on the table really well so been doing lots of, of uh, just different projects on there so also uh, dust collection with the the, the uh, planer 
it made this thing here and it, it does a real good job of collecting the chips from the planer and take it outside um, this had a whole bunch of all kinds of cool stuff and then uh, modified the drill press table pretty good um, on all that stuff so enjoyed that so we're doing pretty good on everything um, tools are getting to be uh, very uh, configurable and getting used to them there's a few things I would like to upgrade but yeah, as far as space goes and things like that I've got three pallets of wood this is like a quarter pallet and uh, I've got three pallets of maple walnut and oak out in the sh in the shed that's dried and so I'm going to be bringing that in and planing it and that will free up that room in there to bring in I got 18 walnut logs right outside the shop that I'm going to turn in and resaw put again put the 10 foot table on the the grizzly and put a new blade on it and go to town resawing that walnut so but yeah projects are coming along pretty good enjoying it and uh, you know you, you sit there and you look at you know, look around the shop and you know when you're retired you have all kinds of fun stuff that you can be working on and and enjoying it uh, there's just all kinds of little things i mean i had a shop collection dust collection to the table saw uh, lots of little things got a lot of little throat the cnc really makes all kinds of fun stuff uh, available I made these little storage boxes for underneath the saws do need to put a couple finger holes in there to pull them out and get that in line but things are coming along pretty well and enjoying it made the tape dispenser over there uh, just lots of stuff I need to just a little bit bigger building and I'd be set to go so here we go saw this uh, dowel keeping jig on the web and all kinds of different parts and it keeps round parts, square parts, a lot of longer three and four feet stuff and it's made out of PVC and uh, wood and the CNC did a real fast job of making that handy and that just kind of sits up there then I made a uh, four position paint booth and it hooks up to a, the fan up there right below it there the hooks into that pipe and it will be outside so we put that on a table and do some resawing on it a thing uh, that I haven't used for quite a while and that's the dust broom on the CNC machine the uh, just no really need for it and I can't even find the thing but anyway um, once you've used the this and you set it up and you've got good results with it the dust boot that goes on there it's just not really something that you want to use because it leaves your shop full of dust and um, um, the noise and everything so i pretty well have chosen not to cnc without having this box on there because it just does such a good job of, of uh, collecting all that i do need to uh, you can see where a little bit of dust is collected inside the windows. I do need to pop these off and clean my windows out, but that's after a year, so that's not too bad. I think I'll probably take that dust shoe off of there because I just haven't used it. And it's a little bit in the way, but, but uh, not too bad. So I just kind of left it on there, but I did have the, the uh, dust boot on there, and I thought, you know, for cleanup, I could run another vacuum hose off of it so it would be clean in it and then still leave this up so I could have the shop back running on that um, so I really hadn't taken that off yet but that's kind of was what was going through my mind on that yeah this uh, thing right here you know it's a it's hundred bucks um, when I had it hooked up without the CNC box I was just getting fine dust all over the whole garage and you know it would pick up some of the stuff and then it would throw some of the stuff on the ground and um, you know it it did it did vacuum but man it was just the fine dust was always floating around covering all the machines up and things like that 
and um, you know just just made a mess so um, it's got to the point where I didn't want to run it the the tools run the, the CNC without the box and the fan running on this and it taking it and dropping it in there so um, as far as that little guy there save your money and build you a CNC box so that was $99 and this box was I don't know two sheets of $15 foam board one inch and some Gorilla Glue so pretty good deal a little plexiglass these CNC things you can make um, these little toggles and on the web uh, one of the young guys on the web he's found the perfect pivot point on these so it's got templates lined out so all I did is just downloaded this and made a v-carve template of it so when I have scrap I'll make some of these but I'm getting to where I have four or five of these on every jig and so I'll jig them up of course I'm mean, all the time using you know little pieces of wood and screws and um, that kind of thing I, I also have the you know the the bolt that and hold downs and stuff like that this is how I designed the uh, tray for the controller it just sits down there and then basically you know it stays pretty dust free down in there every now and then I blow a fuse and you know the router will try try to cut something with a planer bit and I'll blow a fuse and I'll have to pull this thing out and replace the fuses right there by that switch so that's something that you gotta contend with sometimes probably build be better off build me a relay but you know it doesn't happen all that often so anyway I'm real pleased with the with the CNC and the ability to, to get in there and do the do what it is that I need done I also am enjoying the the uh, use of this DAP rapid fuse um, it's like a super glue and it, it uh, you can plane in 30 minutes with it cures in 30 minutes and you got about three minutes maybe three minutes of, of fiddling time so if you don't have much time for fiddling don't use it but uh, it works good for like a quick quick deal and it also will activate with uh, the 2p10 so uh, and also uh, the regular super glue so I use that sometimes still the type bond ultimate is probably my preferred glue for for good strength sometimes I'll use this and this in the activator and I'll use this for the permanent bond and that for a clamping bond let's put a couple drops of this on there you know and some of this in the joint and then hit them and that works out pretty well so can't complain about that we just uh, spent uh, some time working on my son's Toyota we built him a seat in the back so this was a piece of some maple plywood because the maple was four dollars more expensive than a half inch sheet of old pine plywood because we're in this covid crunch so anyway it worked real well on this table so i went ahead and and you put that piece of scrap to to work and these boxes uh were real handy for lifting boxes in the back of the truck they also lift logs up on the resaw table and um so that all works pretty good well you just gotta love the cnc machine um 13 plaques in there four different colors made out of cedar and you ought to have seen the cedar uh, logs that i took that out of and turned into lumber anyway fun stuff with the cnc